and we have right now in here another video of Roman Karnuhov. Karnuhov. Roman Karnuhov, Akuba. And he's presenting to us principles of tuning at the beginning of the video. And I'm going to be trying to translate that. Okay, Vitali, let's start to explain tuning. As you see in here, you have a bihilar winding that I have winded here. I have three layers of the bihilar. And, and that's what you see at the end of the bifilars uh, solder it together one from each of the wind and the lower coil is only being used for the tuning purposes and the first what I'm gonna do is check just the bifilar coil and find out what is the frequency of response what would be frequency of resonance so we have the two wires connected from the generator and when you see the lower coil that's the coil that is being connected to the generator and let's watch what do we have on the screens of the oscilloscopes. We have each of the uh, of the layers independent and see what we have on the each of the three of them. So we're gonna watch what is after the first layer, after the second layer and after the third layer. Now we're going to be looking where do we have the resonance or looking for the resonance. So he's increasing um, the amplitude. He doesn't have a spectrum analyzer, so he is looking at the maximum of the amplitude on the oscilloscope. Okay, we've got it. Sixty one kilohertz. Sixty point nine seven. The yellow trace is the output from the third bifilar layer. Blue, the output from the first bifilar layer. And the one on yellow one on the separate screen is the third bifilar. Oh boy. Okay, so uh, blue is first first bifilar. After the first layer. So I'm gonna leave the the yellow trace, but I'm gonna switch between. Uh, I'm gonna switch the the blue one. So the assumption is that he doesn't use three channels on the oscilloscope, and he cannot show you three traces at the same time. And he's going to connect the second bifidal layer. 
to have comparison between them. That's from the second bifidar. So the first bifidar that we don't see right now on the screen was somewhere in the middle. The second layer is the blue one. And uh, the third one is the yellow one, which has the amplitude twice as big. First layer between, second one the blue one, and the third one twice as much. The difference between the yellow one and uh, no, I'm sorry, between the one in the middle and the blue one, it's our bifilar transformer or transforming part. The blue one to the zero is our output. That's what is utilized by light bulbs. Now we're going to wind the receiving coil on the top of it. And that would be done bifilar or using bifilar coil. Because we want to get exactly the difference of the voltage. So that would be the blue one to zero. But the yellow one to the top of the blue one leave as a, a voltage and the frequency utilized by the bifilar transformer to sustain the action. So we're going to put on the top of it one more layer for the receiving coil. And I think that I'm going to be using this wire, which is 10 square millimeters. And the antenna that I'm going to add into it is going to be by using concept of Tesla. And I'm going to be uh, winding Tesla here for exactly the frequency we see on the oscilloscope. Uh, the capacitive reactance of that antenna will be pretty big. But the frequency of the oscillation will be lower because of that. Because we adding the capacitive um, reactance uh, in, into the structure. But <clears throat> that would be very much easy to tune that device. Right now we have a 60 kilohertz, but when I put on the top of it one more winding, which would be the receiving coil, the coil that is connected to light bulbs, and I, I put the antenna on the top of it, because of the uh, capacitive reactance, the frequency will go down to 51 kilohertz. <laughs> Only what is left over then is to wind Tesla coil exactly, uh, corresponding to the same frequency.
of resonating the same frequency. And of course, um, put at the bottom appropriate primary coil. Well, the coil has to be pretty wide. And that's all. Okay. Большое спасибо, Акуа. Акуа Роман Корнухов. Большое спасибо вам. Um, the thing is that um, uh, Akua is pretty much interesting fellow. From one hand, he wants to have the most money he could make, which is nothing wrong. All of you, all of us, we want to make money. But from the other hand, I don't know if based on the discussion with me, because I'm in a constant contact with him, or because of other influencing factors, he's slowly um, getting to the point at which he understands that there is no patents for it. Although he deserves to have a patent if there is something new he put there. And when the information is in the public domain, that information is hard to be killed or hard to be imprisoned. So hopefully we're gonna have a pretty much progress with it. At the same time we have a few other people rushing with the same direction and they have a pretty much uh, good results so far. I'm not mentioning the names yet. So, guys, let's hope. I have envisioned in 2010 that the revolution will be at 2012 at the end of it, while we have a 2013 end of it. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm prolonging my work on Coleman. There is no one road to Rome. There are plenty of them. There are plenty of different technologies, all of them working. So I assume that if one goes out, all of others will go as well. They will be offended with the fact that they are not needed by anybody any longer. So they will rush to contribute to the general knowledge as they want to make a man as well. Remember guys, 6.8 billion people on the planet Earth. There is another 20 years needed for them to have the devices that gives free energy. Free energy is the energy that must come from somewhere and be changed to the form at which we can utilize. But free energy is the energy that is not being charged by the governments or any other entity. Energy belongs to the people. Thank you very much. My name is Wesley. Channel Stevep, S-T-I-V-E-P, 1.